Hi and welcome to the next in this series of screencasts on programming for psychology and vision science. So in this screencast we're going to look at a way in which we can represent a collection of data in Python. So we're going to use a data type called a list. So in terms of what we're going to cover today, the first thing we're going to do is to look at how we can define a list and how we can use some of its key functions. Second thing is to know how to access the individual elements of a list. So a lot of this will be uh, familiar after the screencast on strings because they share quite a few um, components in common with lists. So as usual, we'll start up by starting a spider and give ourselves a blank file. Okay, so what is a list? So a list is a, a collection of data. For example, we could have um, a list of numbers. So here we could have something like apples equals two, four, and five. So you can see we've, we've created a list by using square brackets, and we're separating the elements of the list by commas. So here we have a list of three elements, each of which is a number. So as should now be familiar to you, we have a, also have a variable called apples that has a set of functions that are associated with it that we can use. So if you recall, we can look at these by typing the variable name, typing a period, and pressing the tab key. Okay, so how about the first one, append? So let's have a look at what the help says. Okay, so we have um, a function that will append object to the end of the list. So what we can do then is add, let's say, another two. So to be able to see what happened, let's print apples. And just to compare, we'll print apples beforehand as well. So now if we save and run, see the first time through, our apples had two, four, and five. Then after we've run this function append with two as our argument, you can see that now apples is two, four, five, two. So we've appended this number two to our list. So in this way, we've, we've changed our list to add this extra number. So let's have a look at a, another of these functions. So we'll look at apples.count. So again, this we have a, a function that is we're going to return the number of occurrences of a particular value that we supply. So let's give it a test. So let's print apples.count, say, 4. And if we run this, we can see that it's found one occurrence of the number 4 in our list. So let's try something else. How about apples.count? two. So how many twos do you think it should find in the list? Let's have a look. Two. So remember we had one initially and then we added another one. How about something like about 100? How many of the one 100 numbers do we have in the list? Zero. So you can see it's able to, to count items that are not present in the list. Okay, so another important thing about lists is that they don't all have to be elements of the same type. So we could have a mixture. So here we have a mixture of strings and numbers. So again, if we have a look at it, we can see that this is, this is fine. So we have a, a list that has a string, a number, a string, and a number. So that's fine. So we can also um, even have lists that contain other lists. So this is an important concept that we're going to come back to later on. So we can have... So here you've seen that our first item is itself a list with two items. Our second item is itself a list with, with two items. So again, if we have a look at it, we can see this, this nested, nested structure. 
So again, we can access the individual elements. So just like we did with strings, if we wanted to look at the, the first element, we use a zero index and we can have a look. And this just shows again, this sort of nested um, structure. So our first element of apples is itself a list containing the string A and the number one. So we can chain these together. So say if we just wanted to get the number one, we can add the index one. And if we run it, we can see we've accessed one. We have the index zero. You can see that we've pulled out the A because we've gone to the zero index of apples, then the zero index of the first index in apples. Okay, so we can also use that, the, the colon index we saw with strings. So we can print apples, and we can also print apples minus one. So if you remember what that does, it essentially reverses the order of our list. So let's have a look here. All right, so you can see that in our first way of indexing apples, we have A1, B2. As we've used this notation here, now we've flipped it around. So we have B2 and then A1. Okay, so finally, we also have functions that will give us lists. So it will generate lists. So let's look at one in particular that's um, quite frequently encountered. And this is called range. So as usual, let's have a look at the help. All right, so we can see that this um, range function is going to uh, return um, a list of, of numbers. So if we just give it one value, it's going to determine where the list stops. So say we want, if we want to go up to 10, let's have a look what it's done here. So you can see this is range function has generated a list from zero through to nine. So we can also provide start, stop, and step values, just like we did um, with our uh, list and string um, access. So if we do something like five, start at five, go to 10 and step by two. Now you can see we've got five, seven, and nine. All right, so let's look back at the objectives of this uh, screencast. So first, we looked at how we can use uh, square brackets to define a list, or we could use a function like range to generate a list. We also considered some of its key functions like append, which lets us grow a list, or count, which counts the number of occurrences of a particular value. Finally, we looked at how we can access the individual elements of a list. Okay, I'll see you in the next screencast.